Hi again everyone. In this video I'm going to walk through activity 7-5 titled Changing an RODC uh, read-only domain controller to a standard domain controller. This is from the MCSE slash MCSA guide to Microsoft Windows Server 2012 administration in preparation of exam 70-411. In my edition of the book this activity begins at the top of page 276. Um, so a quick background if you're not following through the book. We have a domain controller, which I have server 1 as my primary domain controller, fully functional. And then server 2 I have as a read-only domain controller. Um, so we're going to use this activity to convert the second server here from a read-only domain controller to just a standard domain controller. Um, before I begin, I'm going to note that there are several reboots that have to happen on the second server here. Um, during those periods of reboot, I will be pausing the video, so we're not just sitting here watching it reboot. Um, other than that, I think we're ready to begin. So, I haven't begun the process at all. This is just a standard read-only domain controller right now. And so there's a few things we're going to need to do. Um, to begin, we need to remove DNS from the read-only domain controller. Um, then it'll reboot. Once it comes back up, um, we demote it back to a member server rather than a domain controller. And again, it'll have to reboot. Um, so let's go ahead and get those two steps taken care of. So to begin, we want to remove DNS. And allow it to reboot. And you could do this through the server manager console and the add remove features or roles. Um, I just found that command prompt, or the PowerShell command is quicker to get it started. Alright, so while it's rebooting, I'm going to go ahead and pause and we'll be right back. Alright, so the server comes back up and finishes um, prepping the features and removing DNS. Once it's ready, you'll need to log back in. <coughs> and if you're following along in the activity in the book, um, we are down to step three, where we need to demote it back down to a server, a member server. So again, we'll use PowerShell for this. And so this doesn't remove the roles, it just demotes it. And it did, I did have to verify the local administrator password. Um, once it is demoted from being a domain controller, um, you need to be able to log in locally. So it uses the local admin password. And then it goes for another reboot. So then we'll want to get logged back into it once it comes back up. And it may still be a member of the domain. So we can still log in as a domain user or a local administrator. So that's one thing I will check, is to see if it's actually still a domain member, which it should be. It's just no longer a domain controller. I'm 
Okay, so we can see it's still a domain member. So you can log in, as I showed, with uh, domain credentials. And then one thing that we want to check before we go any further is our interface settings for the network. Um, when we installed the read-only domain controller role on this server, it automatically pointed to itself as a DNS server. So we want to go ahead and remove that because it no longer hosts DNS records. And I'm just going to move the primary domain controller up into the first slot and leave the alternate blank. And then we'll want to take a look at IPv6. And so we'll do the same thing here. And I'll just set IPv6 to contact the DNS server directly. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is to finish removing it from the domain. Which you can do here. If you want to walk through the GUI, just drop it over to a work group, give it a work group name, it'll prompt you for a reboot. Yeah, I think I'll just do it through the GUI, it'll be faster. So we'll just make it part of the work group, work group. You can do that with PowerShell, but it's quick and easy using the GUI. And it'll have to go down for another reboot. Once it comes back up, we'll be ready to add the roles again as a full domain controller rather than a read-only. While that finishes booting back up, we want to go ahead and look on our primary domain controller in Active Directory Users and Computers. We want to make sure that Server 2 has been removed, that it's been, it has removed itself from the domain successfully. Depending on where you had it placed, you might have to check a few. Um, so we see that it's down, meaning it's been deactivated. I'm going to go ahead and completely purge it and just delete the account from Active Directory. So there's no record of it anymore. And now, once we can get logged back in, we're ready to use PowerShell to turn it back into a fully operational domain controller. But it's off the domain, I have to use a local login, so the local administrator account. And we're almost done. Any second now? <laughs> So I can get back into PowerShell. There we go. <coughs> Alright, and so the command we're going to use is install dash ad ds domain controller. Then we need to include a switch for the domain name which for my environment is 
411 domain one dot local and then I want to have it prompt for credentials so I'll give it the rest of that command and I'll close the server manager console there So once we hit enter, it should read the command and prompt for credentials. Eventually. go. So we'll use the administrator account. And the safe mode. So it does notify us that we need to create a manual delegation to this DNS server in the parent zone. So while it finishes this, it's going and getting um, the default settings for new domain controllers, um, which includes reinstalling DNS. Um, configuring the paths to the C Windows directory. Um, it'll add it to the site based on the server's IP address or the default site if no subnet is defined on the domain controller. And then once it finishes, it should do a final reboot. So this process takes a couple of minutes. I'm going to come back over to our primary domain controller and open Active Directory Users and Computers. Give it a refresh and we see that Server 2 has added itself back to the domain and it's currently rebuilding the full domain controller role. Um, looks like that's pretty much everything for the activity. I don't see any reason to drag this video out waiting for it to go through its reboot process again. Um, so as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them for me below. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.